Hello friends, welcome to Stories with Arna. Today we are going to read Osborne Young reading Cinderella, retold by Susanna Davidson, illustrated by Fabiano Fiorin. You may have a copy of this book, maybe you can get it, so let's read it along. Cinderella Chapter 1 Invitation to a Ball Cinderella! shouted her stepmother, looking up from a letter. Come and clean my bedroom at once, she said. Yes, stepmother, Cinderella called from the kitchen, where she was making lunch. Her stepsisters had ordered their usual revolting dishes. Ugh. Well, I've made the sausage trifle, Cinderella thought to herself. The cabbage and custard pie will just have to wait. She picked up her broom and made her way to the stairs. But her stepsisters were blocking the way. What's little Cinders doing today then? Teased Griselda. She is sweeping away cobwebs like a servant. Sneered Grimella. How rude. Get on with it then, servant girl, Griselda said. Just then, Cinderella's stepmother appeared. Griselda, Grimella, she cried. I have the most exciting news. The prince is giving a Christmas ball and you're invited. We'll dress you in the finest clothes. Only the best for my beautiful darlings. Isn't that right, dear? She said to Cinderella's father. Cinderella gripped her broom hard. May I go to the ball as well? She asked in a scared whisper. You? To the ball? Said her stepmother. You must be joking. You belong in the kitchen. Cinderella turned to her father, but he coughed and looked away. He's too scared of stepmother to help me, thought Cinderella. If only I could go to the ball. Chapter 2 A Surprise Visit We'll be the most beautiful girls there, chorused the stepsisters. I'm sure the prince will want to marry one of you, said their mother proudly. Now Cinderella, she went on, as a special treat and since it's nearly Christmas. Yes, Cinderella cried. You may help Griselda and Grimella choose their dresses. All that week boot makers dressmakers, wig makers and hairdressers streamed through the door. Cinderella tried to make her stepsisters look as pretty as possible. It wasn't easy. Grimella wanted to wear a hat decorated with stuffed birds. Griselda chose a lime green dress with yellow spots. What about feathers rather than stuffed birds, Grimella? Cinderella suggested politely. And Griselda, I think the yellow dress suited you better. Shut up, Cinders! What would you know? said Grimella. But you might be right. We must look grander than everyone else. Sew so on lots of rubies and ribbons. Cinderella worked all day and all night putting the finishing touches to their outfits. Hurry up, Cinderella, said one of the sisters. At last they were ready. Cinderella's stepsisters gazed at themselves in the mirror. Don't we look gorgeous, they shrieked. We'll be the finest ladies at the ball. Oh, my.
my tinker bells you look wonderful their mother gasped let's go the coach is here cinderella put up the christmas decorations while we are gone the front door was opened there was a swish of skirts and a blast of cold air then cinderella was left alone as she struggled with the christmas tree tears blurred her eyes oh she sobbed getting tangled in tinsel i wish i wish i could go to the ball a loud crash in the chimney made cinderella look up there in the fireplace covered in soot was her godmother chapter 3 fantastic felicity godmother felicity cried cinderella whatever are you doing in our chimney i missed the door felicity replied airily but i haven't seen you since i was 10 said cinderella i've been with sleeping beauty my other godchild explained felicity but she wouldn't wake up so it was rather dull have you been crying cinders asked felicity looking at her closely yes i wanted to go to the ball but i am not allowed well you can wipe those tears away girly fantastic felicity is here to help now go to the garden and fetch me a large pumpkin great thought cinderella my step sisters are at the ball and i am picking up pumpkins for my crazy godmother here you are cinderella said a few minutes later it's the biggest one jolly good felicity replied this shouldn't take long now Mm, what was the spell um felicity said cinderella yes dear said felicity why are you waving that stick around this isn't a stick cinderella her godmother replied it's a wand the time has come to tell you a great secret Your godmother is a fairy. Really? Watch, she went on. Felicity flicked her wand at the pumpkin and cried out, "Abra kadabra, kadabra kadin." Cinderella waited. Nothing happened. I don't know much about fairies, Cinderella said, but shouldn't you be using the other end of your wand? Well, spotted Cinderella. Silly me," said Felicity. "Suit on the brain. Let's try again," said the fairy godmother. There was a wonderful tinkle of music and a shower of sparks. In the place of the pumpkin stood a beautiful golden coach. Cinderella gasped. You really can do magic. Yes, said Felicity, and this is just the beginning. Now, where's your mouse trap? Under the sink, said Cinderella. Felicity peered in. Six mice, one fat rat, all alive. Excellent. Open the mouse trap door, Cinderella. Kazam! said felicity as each of the mice came out felicity gave them a little tap with her wand one by one the mice were transformed into fine white horses the rat became a rosy cheeked coachman with very large whiskers now i need six lizards said felicity hmm i expect there'll be some behind your watering can there are 
said Cinderella, handing them to her godmother. In a flash, the lizards became footmen. At your s s s s service, Cinderella. They were dressed in glistening green and looked as if they had been footmen all their lives. There you are, Cinderella," said Felicity, sounding rather pleased with herself. "Now you can go to the ball. I'll be off now." But I can't go in these rags," Cinderella cried out. Felicity touched Cinderella with her wand. A moment later, her rags turned into a dazzling dress of gold and silver. On her feet was a perfect pair of little glass slippers. There's just one problem," said Felicity. You must leave before twelve. On the last stroke of midnight, my magic will begin to fade. I promise," Cinderella replied, climbing into the coach. And thank you so much," she called, as the horses swept her away. Chapter Four. When Cinderella entered the ballroom, everyone fell silent. Then slowly a whisper went around the room. Who can she be? Everyone is wondering who is this beautiful girl. Who is that beautiful girl? The ladies wondered. She must be a princess. A voice next to Cinderella almost made her jump. It was the prince. May I have this dance? He asked. Cinderella and the prince. Twirled across the floor. She is so graceful," said the other ladies. "And look at her dress. Have you ever seen anything so delicate? Ignore her. This is the stepmother telling the thing to her daughters. The prince is only being polite," said Grimella. "He'd much rather dance with me." Cinderella was enjoying herself so much she forgot to watch the time. As the prince whirled her around the room, she caught sight of the clock. The time! Oh no! She said, "It's almost midnight. I must go." Cinderella pulled away from the prince and ran across the dance floor. The prince raced after her. "Come back!" he called. "I don't even know your name." But Cinderella had disappeared into the darkness. Have you seen a girl in a gold and silver dress? The prince asked the palace guard. No, said the guard. A girl ran past a moment ago, but she was dressed in rags. I've lost her, thought the prince sadly. The prince turned back to the palace with a sigh. Then something on the steps caught his eye. Her glass slippers! He cried. Chapter Five: The Glass Slippers. Cinderella ran home as fast as she could. She arrived just before her stepsisters. How was the ball? Cinderella asked. It was very grand, said Griselda. Far too grand for the likes of you. I'm sure the prince is in love with me," said one of the stepsisters as she entered the house. Cinderella smiled, but she said nothing. The next morning, the entire street was woken by the shout of a town crier, who was followed by a messenger. By the order of His Royal Highness the Prince, every girl in the kingdom must try on this glass slipper. The prince will marry its true owner. It read. Cinderella's stepmother flung open the front door and grabbed the messenger. One of my girls will fit this shoe, she said proudly, and then I'll be the queen. 
Griselda couldn't even fit her big toe in the shoe. She pushed until her foot was bright red. You stupid girl! Give it to me! shouted Grimella and snatched the glass slipper from her sister. Grimella rammed half her foot in the shoe but then it got stuck. Squeeze, Grimella! shrieked her mother. You're not trying hard enough. I'm trying as hard as I can, Mama, said Grimella with a grunt. Ow! You useless child, cried her mother. She wrenched the slipper off Grimella's foot and flung it at the messenger. Off you go then, she snapped. The messenger cleared his throat. Excuse me, ma'am, he said. But my strict orders are that every young lady is to try on the shoe. He looked directly at Cinderella. What about this girl? What? said Grimella. She is just a servant. You needn't bother with her. Cinderella's father coughed. Actually, he began. Shut up, you stupid man, interrupted the stepmother. Cinderella has as much right to try on the slipper as anyone. He went on bravely. Oh, Papa, said Cinderella. She walked over to the messenger and slipped on the shoe. It was a perfect fit. No, shrieked Griselda and Grimella. She can't be a princess, shouted their mother. I won't allow it. This is all your fault. Get out, she screamed at the messenger. I want you to pretend this never happened. So she's getting angry on her husband. With one swift movement, the messenger swept off his hat and cloak. And everyone in the room gasped. It was the prince. You? He rode over to Cinderella. I would have searched my kingdom for you, he said. Will you marry me? Cinderella smiled. Oh, yes, she replied. At that moment, there was a puff of smoke and Felicity flew into the room. She held her wand above her head and a starry mist swirled around them all. Time for a little more magic, she declared. Felicity flicked her wand and gave Cinderella a dress even more beautiful than the one she had worn to the ball. Thank you, said Cinderella. My princess, said the prince and swept Cinderella off to his palace. Cinderella and the prince were married the very next day and lived happily ever after. Griselda and Grimella were not so happy. We wanted to marry the prince, they are saying, and they are now the ones cooking in the kitchen. Their mother never stopped scolding them. It's all your fault for having such big feet, she told them. And that's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed reading Cinderella with us. See you next time. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe.